Hello and welcome to the sixth edition of Bree Online Live. I am sitting here with the Richmond Powwow Association, where they have a big event coming up pretty soon. And we're going to do a little interview here to see what the powwow is all about. First of all, I want to introduce everyone here. We've got Jan, Jerry, Debbie, and Phil. And sorry, you see me looking at my notes, but I just just met you. <laughs> but I want you, first of all, just to tell us what is the Richmond Powwow Association? What's it all about? Well, I can go back to the history and how it began. Uh, the powwow began in 1994. Dr. Neil Wright, who was uh, chair of international uh, studies at EKU, happened to pick the Native Americans to do a culture fest on. So we all, well, I jumped on the bandwagon as well as several others from the city and that's how our powwow began. The first powwow was a huge success and it just grew from there. So. Fantastic. And uh, of course the event's coming up uh, in uh, September, yes. right? And so we'll make sure this gets on, on the air before then. And basically what would you expect it to experience at the powwow? This year we're going to have a teepee village. We're gonna have a, buff a live buffalo. We're going to have a mountain man campground, the usual dancing, drumming, singing. We're going to have vendors with crafts. They're going to sell their crafts. We're going to have food vendors with uh, Native American tacos, um, buffalo burgers, bear burgers, and the Indian cuisine, which is fry bread. Well, also, <laughs> I've been the storyteller with them for years. Um, I did a program in 93 on KET, and that's how Jan and myself met. Mm -hmm. And that's when I started storytelling as a storyteller, and I've been going since then, so I've been, I do do powwows in different schools. I live in Lexington, di different groups to teach our history of all different tribes. Okay. Uh -huh. So I've been with the powwow eight years. About eight years, I got into it uh, from school, where my daughter went to school, and one of her teachers was actually involved in it, and she got me in it, and I just do it because I love it, because I have Cherokee in my family, okay. so that's why I do it. And uh, I really don't know how long I've been a member of the Powell Association, but uh, quite a while. <laughs> Jan and I used to work together at Eastern Kentucky University, and that's how I got into it, because she, yeah. she really played it up and, and I got involved and, and it was not mm -hmm. playing it up, it was real. It was, yeah. you know, it's, it's, it's an educational thing uh, for the children and for everybody actually, mm -hmm. yes. and myself included. I got educated on, my, on a lot of things. So. Fantastic. Well, I look forward to it. I'll make sure I get out there to, to yes. experience it this time. Yes. And it's at the Battlefield, Battlefield Park, right? Yes. Yeah, the, <laughs> yes. the Battle of Richmond. Yes. Yeah. Okay. And uh, which is easy to get to now if you're on the interstate. You got that Dunn Cannon exit. Well, yes. Yeah, that makes it really mm -hmm. nice. Uh, and, and the brown signs are up now. I guess you yes. noticed that too, yes. right? They got their All signs. Right. So uh, easy to find. Uh, when you get there, is, is there a, a fee to, to, to enter or? There's $5. We have to charge $5 a person. Usually uh, children under 12 get in free. We wish we didn't have to charge a fee, but the fee that we charge has to go to the pay the talent to come and perform the dancing, drumming, the singing, and so forth. Everything costs, Everything we understand. Everything costs. <laughs> and we do not keep any of the money. All the money goes directly to the natives in the payment for their services. We do have to have a little bit of money for mailing to, we mail out, um, letters to school children all over the state of Kentucky and they come from Campbellsville, from Lexington, they come from all over. Well and that's what Rhonda uh, McIntyre was telling me that uh, uh, when she booked for you all to, to be on the show that you do this over three days and then the first day is actually a Friday and, and that's pretty much designated a school day where uh, they bus in yes. students to, to this uh, Event. Yes. yes. We have we usually have what around a thousand, At least a thousand. kids, and that is why we do it. That is our uh, our mission statement. Basically, we we do this powwow to educate the public, but especially the children, to so they know the culture. 
and we want to keep this culture alive for generations to come. We don't want the Hollywood stereotype. We want kids to see real Native Americans where they're they're um, they're not full bloods, most of them, but we all have heritage. We all have uh, a Cherokee or a Shawnee or something in our heritage. Ninety percent of Kentuckians can trace back through their history that they do have Native American ancestry, and we just want to keep that alive. Yeah, I have Cherokee on both sides, so I know what you're talking about, and it's only two generations back, so it's not that far. Exactly. So, it, and it, it seems pretty common place. Yes. Uh, you're in this area anyway. Yes. So, tell me about your your history, all of you. Uh, what, what? How did you find out your heritage, or did you know your grandparent or great grandparent? Well, or? let's start with me. Um, my dad was an orphan, so I spent many years trying to help out. He was born in uh, Stamping Ground, Kentucky, on a farm that was the first Indian morning school of the Choctaw, Cherokee, Chickasaw Creek, and Seminole called the Choctaw Academy in 1823 to 1848 when it was closed. Um, he was put in a, a orphanage and treated very badly being a, a native person. Um, so I found through family that he was Choctaw in Oklahoma. I managed to go out two or three times. They adopted me because there is no Bible, but it was in my mom's Bible and a letter that my mom wrote for me after she died. Uh, and so I ran around, have a license place as Choctaw, C-H-O-C-T-A, we came. But I was in 97, 2000, I get a phone call and they go, you are a storyteller at this powwow. We got to comparing names and we're showing me back to the 1600s. Oh. So now I'm with the Piqua Shawnee, we're a state right recognized in Alabama by treaty. And um, I've been voted in um, by the ladies of the Bear Clan because the other man moved off as Bear Clan chief. Well, now I learn that we do have Cherokee through mom because my grand part of my grandfather's family of Virginia, but he was his mother took him back to Cherokee to be born because that's where she was from. Okay. So I'm a mixed blood of a mixed blood of Scotch, Irish, and native. But I, we did do a DNA through my tribe for Chief Blue Jacket. Everybody said he's white. He was not. And I'm a direct bloodline of Chief Blue Jacket of the of the Shawnee people. Fantastic. Well, that's a big story. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Right, go ahead. Share one of your other stories there. How did you find uh, out? Well, I just know from, from my family, from my family Bible and from my mother and father who's passed, uh, on my mother's side, my grandmother's mother was full-blooded Cherokee. And on my father's side, my great-great-great-grandmother was Blackfoot. I've not been able to find any else other than just what I was told on the Blackfoot. <laughs> and then on the Cherokee part, I could go back so far, but a lot of the records were burned mm -hmm. up in Cherokee. Mm -hmm. And yes. so it ended from there. Jerry's been trying to help me mm -hmm. find a way to, to try to find out more about it, but that's all I know right now. Okay. Uh, I'm kind of like Debbie. I, I went, uh, I'm going mostly by word of mouth from handed down from, from my parents. And it was on my father's side that I was part Cherokee. And uh, I haven't been able to trace anything either, so. But you, don't, you don't know how far back then? I do not know how far okay. back. And you, Jane? Um, my grandmother on my dad's side uh, was Cherokee. She was full blood. Her name was Sally Ace Faircloth. And everyone always talked about her growing up. As, but I never really, you know, thought anything about it. And then I got really into the powwow, and I started tracing my heritage, my roots. And it was fascinating, and it was also sad, because this past summer, I really found out that they went on the Trail of Tears. And it was a very emotional moment for me, because I never knew that they did this. But they survived, and they came back to their county, home county of Casey County, Kentucky, and that's where they died. So this... This horrible thing you read about in history class 
came home. <laughs> that totally did not touch you at all at no. the time when you learned about it. Yes. All of a sudden comes full turn. That is. Yes. That's that's right up there with Holocaust stories, yes. isn't it? Yes, it is. It is. Um, and a uh, much bigger event in history than I think than they even share now. I think mm -hmm. that, that mm -hmm. a lot of things are, are cut back because they got to get the core content in. It's all got to be got mm -hmm. in, but <laughs> yeah. we miss some of the some yeah. of the important things, I believe, uh, out of that. Okay, um, with your powwow, how would someone want to join if they have Native American in them and, and, and are interested in this group? Jane? We have a website. Um, it's... Um, richmondpowwow.org um, you can join on the website you can ask to be well we don't add we don't just say hey you're a member we invite you to come to our our meetings and then we you know we talk and discuss things and if you want to look for your heritage there are people that we can contact you we can get in contact with for you so. okay and well and the other thing um, as far as the, the powwow, and, um, there's a lot of people that come are like Debbie and, mm -hmm. and, and all that are looking for help. So uh, there are books that you can get that are written by some of the native people. Mm -hmm. And like me, I'm a storyteller. If I sit on the side, somebody wants questions, there's a lot of people that will help there. Mm -hmm. And like the removal uh, the Cherokee weren't first. It was Choctaw, mm -hmm. Cherokee, the Creek, and then the Seminole and Chickasaw people. So it, it was a, a sad time. Many people died. And that is one of the things that we try to teach maybe there so the people will understand what's going on. My people, as far as I know, I'm not sure if they ever went there. <clears throat> Most of them were, you know, in the mountains. Okay. But... Um, the powwow itself here, like Jan has worked so hard and she has struggled to get the financing sometimes to bring the people in. But the people still come because they want to learn. Mm -hmm. And like school, uh, we try to teach those kids when they come off the bus and meet us, we try to meet them mm -hmm. and they go, where do you, where do you work? You know, I work with Fair King School System. She works for a beauty, you know, in the store as manager, and we tell them we're we're just like you with school, church, you know, whatever. We're just everyday people. We're not any different, you know, that type of thing. So, I, I hope that does help to let you know. And that's what the powwow is for people to come in, enjoy. We even had one or two in the last couple of years had never danced with Native blood. They get out to dance, they're just broken hearted when we have to break down on Sunday. Mm -hmm. That type of thing. So we're here to help other people because that's the way I was taught by two or three elders. Fantastic. And that's why we're here. So, But mm -hmm. Debbie and, and, and Phil are behind the scene working all the time dan and jan if it wasn't for them this powwow wouldn't be keep going they have really really worked hard and um i we got people like myself that dance from time to time and they'll see kids and we'll invite mom and dad out mm -hmm. to dance and they go well i've just never been asked to do this before so our our is we're here to teach and help others learn well, it sounds like a lot of fun. Yeah. I, I can't wait, like I said. That's uh, really neat getting in touch with with something that, that's part of you and yeah. you don't even know it. Or, or yeah. you don't miss it because you don't know that, it, that it's not there. Right. Yeah. Exactly. Fantastic. Now, you've brought some traditional things, some of the clothes you're wearing, and, and you've brought a couple of things. Why don't you uh, share about that? Well, I'm wearing, today I'm wearing jeans. We start wearing <laughs> jeans in the 1800s. <laughs> point is that I'm wearing jeans. We did wear jeans in 1800s. That's a, you know, I do have deer pants and leggings that I will wear. Uh, my ribbon shirt was made by a Shawnee lady, but she had Cherokee blood. The ribbons of red and black are tribal colors of mm -hmm. Cherokee, the Choctaw, the Creeks, 
uh, it also I'm a veteran of two conflicts and that is can be veterans colors I belong to a warrior society um, I brought a turban I wear a turban now the Cherokees didn't really wear headbands that much, okay? But the turban goes back to the 1700s. Colors of our, our of our clothing, the ladies and all, this is mixed of three different colors because no colors were ever the same, made in one. Mm -hmm. They patched together what they had at that time. Now, way, way back, they wore the eagle and hawk feather but the French and the British came along the English and brought the feathers for exchanging beads or whatever. So this is an ostrich feather. I wear the ostrich it, and it brings back to the old way of the old. I like to do as much of the old way as I can of the older, older tradition. And that's why I wear the leggings or the deer pants. And um, so the shirt, now, I have a bag, and every time I go to school, and these kids go, what kind of purse is that? I go, it's a possible bag. <laughs> you carried anything possible, and now you the people didn't have a lot of money, so they swap whatever you have. And I have another turban at home I didn't bring that a Cherokee man made, and he needed turquoise to make something, so my turquoise was his, his pay for, for my uh, other turban. And I brought a flute. This flute was made by name Walker. Uh, we do go to Cherokee. My wife is of Cherokee Choctaw heritage. And um, found this up in eastern Kentucky. I mean, uh, in, the, in the mountains of, of um, the Smokies is what I'm trying to say. Yeah. <laughs> and the flute was used, according flute. Now, our older ways were five-hole flute, which I could play as five. Uh, and the old story was the uh, Lakota people, if a young man saw a young lady and he liked her, he had to sit fast for seven days and make a flute to play, and it's cedar. And so what the story was, one boy did that for seven days. He saw a, a bird woodpecker, and he tried to play, and he couldn't play, and then watched him again. And so this has been used on the burial of veterans, which I have another flute, or um, a song that I can't play is Amazing Grace, because Jane just lost her dad and I played Amazing Grace at the funeral for him. So, but it's different music. Our way, there were no written music. It's just what came from the heart. Um, to carry on, I'm wearing a gorget, which is from Cherokee. Uh, trade bit from the French and the English or the British. Uh, being that I'm a bear clan of the Piquashawnee, I have bear clan, black bear cloths that I wear pretty much anywhere. So, um, so everything I've got is it's traditional of the old way and modern way. All right. Well, I'm going to have you play some of the flute when we when we end here in a few okay. minutes. But uh, first, we'll let talk about what you've got. I really like the necklace and the earrings there, by the way. Uh, I got this. Well, I got this at the powwow. And this is uh, the bear. I'm not exactly sure what the bear stands for, Jerry. Bear strength. 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 Okay. Well, Lord knows I need all that. Mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> I actually had one year at the powwow. This was when I first started in the powwow. And I was just, you know, just working. And I had a chief come up to me. And he looked at me and he walked past and he turned around and he came back and he looked at me again and he said did you know you're a bear well at that time i had no clue you know i was just getting into everything and he said you're a bear he said that's a good thing mm -hmm. so it seemed like every time somebody after that gave me gifts or whatever they gave me something that had bears on it i have another set of earrings that that same man gave me at that powwow. So that's what this is all about. That's very neat. This dress, mm -hmm. though, the this the old Cherokee, the dress of the Cherokee, they call it tear dress, but it was really a tear dress. The way they made it, because they didn't, is that they take the ribbons and all, and they would tear it and sew it into a pattern. And my wife has one, and. They also 
war on the removal to Oklahoma. So okay. the ribbon may be a, a different color to ever who made it or to Debbie, but it's this dress, most of these dresses like this were worn on the removal of all five nations. Mm -hmm. And it got very cold because all the removals were November, October, December, January, oh, February in, in freezing rain or ice storms and they didn't really have what to call warm clothing. But this is a very deep history of the Cherokee women. Now one other thing I will say this of the Cherokee and the Shawnees and all, the women ruled the tribe. Oh. Okay. That's the strange. women of strong. That's a change. I heard that. <laughs> they, they really did. They led them. They led their because they were required. I mean, they led them because they had, when they had children, they had to take care of the garden and all. If the men went to our Indian Fort and we were in Lexington and killed a bear, or whatever, they had to literally go down, clean it, gut it, bring it back, and make clothing. Now, something I didn't know until two years ago, when the men were sitting on for treaties to be removed, uh -huh. they couldn't officially sign it unless the women said that this they would agree. <laughs> this is the old. So the old way was, and I got in trouble one day telling the story. If the men went out and run around and didn't behave themselves, the women would take everything the men owned, hang them out, the mocks, the weapons. She just divorced him. Heck, was paying five hundred dollars and going to attorney, <laughs> so she could go and she could go and and find another man. while he had to, you know, but the men and women could not be of the same clan. They had to be different clans, and that's all tribes. They had to be of different. So I'm married. Good thing because you're bear. I'm bear. That wouldn't work out. <laughs> <laughs> We've been friends and for a long time. Yeah. yeah. And all. So that's just some history there. Okay, you know, you just a chance to ask about your shirt. Like, oh, about my shirt? Yeah. I'll listen to Jerry. Now, <laughs> now we know why he's a storyteller. <laughs> Good job, Jerry. Yeah. I'm learning something today that I didn't know. Uh, I didn't realize when I put it on this morning, but apparently this was the 1996, one of our most successful uh, powwows that we've had here in Richmond. And to be, if, if you want any details, of course, I'd have to refer back to Jan, but you know that we had some, some very, very uh, popular Native Americans that was there that year for, for right. You can look at his, his shirt. There are four colors on it. There's red, black, white, and yellow. And that represents the four directions, the four races of man, and the, um, I can't think of the other one. What's the other one? Well, you got races, the se four seasons. I'm four sorry. seasons. Four got seasons. And, and Cherokees always put blue in the north of the cold wind. Some of the other tribes put black because a lot of bad things come out of the north. But the blue, the the blue represents cold wind, mm -hmm. and the, all the cold wind comes out of the north, basically. Okay. It also represents Mother Earth and Father Sky. The green is Mother Earth and the blue is Father Sky. And we're coming from four directions, but we're coming together as a, as a race, as a, as a nation. We're coming together in unity, and that's what we need um, in this world. We, we need for all of the races to come together. And, and another story that was told to me a long time ago, because I have like red, white, black, and yellow beads, that represents all races that we take them for the heart not the color of skin and my grandfather said never look at the color of skin look at the person's heart a whole lot of peace would come to the world that way a lot of wisdom in that isn't there mm -hmm. yes. it's kind of a simple thought yeah. mm -hmm. hard to practice though sometimes mm -hmm. yeah. in society I'm talking about yes, in society, <laughs> yeah. that's just the way I was raised yeah my wife is too, was too. Uh, well, we've done a lot of traveling, especially in Europe and places, and and uh, it it's I mean, it's just true. It's it's part mm -hmm. of society. It doesn't need to be, but it is. Yeah. It is. Now go ahead and talk about your. Well, these were basically gifts um, to me. 
the necklace is a is a fetish necklace. Uh, Native Americans are brothers, and we are part of all things. Is how the natives think, or how we live our lives. We're a part of all things: birds, animals, trees. I mean, there are brothers and sisters. So this ne necklace represents the brothers and sisters from the four legs, the two legs, the winged ones, the fishes. That's how we pray, and that's how we, how we, how Native Americans are. The dress is a, oh, it's a skirt actually. Helen Katukula, if I'm pronouncing her name right, she was from Albuquerque, New Mexico, and I'm not sure what tribe she was from. I don't know if she was Taos Pueblo, but one of those tribes out there. She made this for me, and the the. Um, Turquoise was very significant to Native Americans. It's it's a stone that is known around the world as a peace stone, and well, it's just it's just a really good stone. Anyway, the ribbons uh, when you dance, the ribbons touch the earth, and there's spirits there. That's what she told me, and she did it. She looked at me and gave me these colors, and I have no idea why. But that's, I, to this day, I don't know. I wear it sometimes. I've danced at our powwows when I have the time and the energy <laughs> to do it. But it's been a very um, rewarding dress for me. And my husband, I have to get a, a little word in here. Well, my, he's, he's ill today, right? So yes, right here. He, yeah. he has vertigo, bless his heart. But he, he, has, no, um, he has no native blood. But he's very talented. His Indian name is Two Winds Bear, and he um, he wove this for me. Oh wow, that is and very nice. And it's very precious to me. All the colors that are in my skirt and blouse are in the in the sash. And he does uh, demonstrations of weaving for the children, and they're very fascinated by it. That's great. And also, <laughs> these were given to me. I don't know if they can show up or not. But they're, um, they're Iroquois. There was a lady, uh, she was Iroquois from, at our powwow, and I think she was the one that gave the really good prayer, the older lady. Mm -hmm. um, anyway, these are made out of porcupine quills and beads. And you can see that, that how delicate that is and how time consuming that would be to, to make these. That's, that's very intricate. Very nice. Okay, well, this is the Richmond Powwow Association, and you'll see on your screen now the dates, which are September 24th, 25th, and 26th. Also, there'll be more information on there about times and details. Uh, I want to thank Jan and Jerry and Debbie and Phil for joining us. <laughs> I tried not to use my cheat sheet. <laughs> and uh, uh, very, very interesting. Uh, I just... I want to get you back in here later and, and talk more detail once I learn a little more. I feel like maybe I could ask better <laughs> questions. You know, There's so much here, and I know you've got a lot of stories to tell. Yes. I think we could run out a few memory cards on <laughs> you. <laughs> but uh, if you don't mind to play the flute for us a little bit as, as we're uh, ending the program here. Okay. <sighs> continue to play. You've been watching the Braille Online Live Show. This is our sixth edition. Join us in a couple weeks for a new edition. Thanks for joining us.